Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been a long, long time and I sincerely apologize for that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no other way to put it. I've been slacking off with my YouTube work, but I am back and hopefully back for good this time. And for my first video back, I wanted to reconnect with my roots, if you may. Um, you know, put out a good old fashioned Webflow interaction. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So really the main focus of this interaction is gonna be this text-based sort of effect that we're having. So as I scroll here, you'll see that the text sort of flips in a 3D way and it also tilts. So this is a very versatile inter uh, interaction. You can put it in your nav menus like I've utilized here in this very small example, or you could use it with any sort of collection of like headings that you wanna put out, just anything for that little sort of subtle hint of interactivity. Now I'm gonna stop talking and we'll just get right into it. To start us off, I really have a very, very simple sort of div. It's just titled section main, but all it is is just, it has a width of 100% and a height of 100BH. It's basically just taking up the whole screen and I just gave it a black background. This is just gonna be our canvas sort of, um, nothing special about this. Really, I, I just really wanna focus on the interaction and the other bells and whistles that we might add there. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a div, okay? So we're gonna grab this div and for the sake of class names, I'm going to, let me switch back over here. I'm gonna pretend that this, these are nav links and I'm gonna name my classes accordingly. So I won't get into creating the whole menu and stuff, but I will name my classes like that. So now I'll just uh, tell you guys what I'm doing. I'm grabbing a div and I'm gonna call it nav link wrapper, okay? So how this interaction is gonna function is it's gonna have two pieces of text right so two text blocks so let me just grab those two out in here so grab a text block place it into this div and both of these text blocks are going to contain the same text obviously so this is going to say home and home but they'll be in different fonts so they're going to sort of operate as our switch mechanism but this nav link wrapper is to make sure that everything is inside that same sort of like div and box so um yeah let me just change the text on this first one i'll call this home and put that same text here so now just to sort of make it look a little bit more presentable i'm going to go back to the section main and i'm going to apply some flex box styling so we can just center in the middle really simple um okay so our nav link wrapper so this is really going to hold our two pieces of text and be the catalyst for that interaction so it'll be the element that we put the trigger on now because we want these two text blocks to be centered on top of each other what we are going to do is we're going to grab we're going to go in here again we're going to use flexbox and just center it on top but you're like uh, that's not doing anything right well we're going to use a very special property we're going to grab our second text block let me give this a class too i'll call this nav link and then i'm going to give it another class it's called sans because if you notice here our second text the one that's that it's flipping to is in sans and the other one is in serif so this is just for me to differentiate obviously you can do whatever you want but um okay so now that i have our sans what i'm going to do is i want to position it underneath our first text right so i'm going to go into my position settings here and i'm going to hit absolute now that worked that actually worked very well so i'm just gonna <laughs> leave that alone and let's just go ahead and change our font sizes i'm going to just get rid of this serif combo class for one second um, that way it'll affect both this nav link and this nav link here. Like they have the same classes. The combo class is just a way of differentiating members of the same class. So, um, to help make that make more sense, let me give this 120, right? So then now our previous sort of text is also size 120 because it's inheriting that from that nav link class, but it has this separate sans class that has the position absolute our serif one doesn't have that okay so that's good this height is just going to change the line height and i'm just going to make that one dash that just makes it the same amount as the size of the actual text okay 
So as far as fonts go, I'm gonna pick Palantino for this one and capitalize it. Okay, so there's our serif. Oh, yeah, okay, there's our serif. And yeah, and then we're gonna go back to our sans and we just wanna change that to something more. Let's see, what do we have here? We can go for this one. Yeah, actually I might change this one to Times New Roman. Sorry, I'm, I'm picky with my fonts. Okay, so for this, yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Just make that big bigger. Okay, perfect, and bolt it. The final thing that we wanna do is make this second sort of piece of text not visible, right? So we're just gonna lower the opacity, bring that all the way down to zero, so it's completely faded out. Right? So now let's get into the interaction portion. So I'm going to make sure I'm selecting this nav link wrapper. And I'm going to put a trigger on it. So I'm going to call this mouse hover. And okay, here. Let's make one called vertical text flip in. Okay. Now, why in? Well, when you hover into this animation, it is, it is changing it, right? So it's bringing in that new element. But we want it to go back to its original state when we hover out like it's happening right now so that we can like keep doing the animations over and over again and not have it being like stuck in this phase all the time when we hover out so that's why we're going to call this in and we'll design our second one and call that one out we're going to grab our second nav link right the one that's not visible right now so because you it's hard to select it when you're in here make sure you're selecting it from this panel down here so you're going to grab the second nav link okay and we are going to rotate it okay and we're going to rotate it on this x-axis and we cannot see it but we're just gonna eyeball it so i'm gonna say maybe negative 100 degrees okay and i'm gonna set this as the initial state now you're like okay what does that mean right that means that before the interaction even begins right like before you even hover what is the state that this object is in so what what settings does it have applied to that uh, applied to itself before the interaction begins right and that's where we want it to be it's it's when we hover in that we want it to flip forward right so we're just gonna leave that there now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flip back to our original or, or the the visible nav link right now the serif one right and we are going to not in the initial state but where it says zero zero we are going to rotate that also backwards so let's go back to our negative position in here let's go back to let's do we can do negative 100 again okay so then it gets to sort of that phase right there right while it's rotating backwards we also want it to be fading out okay so we're just gonna bring that all the way back down okay now let's go back to our our um sans nav link right so we are going to rotate that one this time instead of going back negative 100 degrees we'll just bring it down to zero degrees so facing completely forward and then the final touch is just going to be to bring it all the way up opacity wise let's try it out okay so it's a little bit clunky so let's get to fixing that i'm going to grab the first one and i'm going to hit shift and select the last one this is just a quick and easy keyboard shortcut i'm going to bring the duration down i'm going to say maybe 0.2 seconds we want it to be quick it's a snappy interaction it's not meant to draw any attention it's just supposed to be like oh wow that's cool um, but yeah, okay, and I'm gonna change the easing settings. Yeah, ease in looks fine to me. I'm just gonna see. Okay, it looks a little bit better, but there still seems to be some sort of like a weird, it, it, it still looks a little bit weird. So let me hit save and let me go into my, uh oh, let me go into preview mode here. So I'm gonna hit preview. Like you can still see this um, nav link like at this state and I really don't want it to be like that. So I'm gonna figure out how to fix it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to delay the addition of the second uh, serif one popping in. So maybe I'll give it a delay of 0.1 seconds. So just like just barely happening after our first interaction. Okay, that looks good too. I actually like that. Um, now the final part of our interaction would just be to sort of skew it a little bit. So I'm going to go in here to skew. I'll just do a couple degrees, really. I don't want it to be anything too distracting. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, that was too slow, so let's do 0.3. Again, go for ease. Okay, that 
is too fast. Hold up. Let's change the duration. Let's make it 0.3. Okay. I'm going to grab all of these and then I'm going to just change the easing settings. So you can play around this with this for a while. Okay. I think ease in out is good. Let's try ease. Okay. I think ease might be the best. It's like the choppiest. Okay. Perfect. So now we have our in animation. Where did that one come from? Okay, now let's make our out animation. This is just going to be the exact opposite of what we just did. So we're to vertical flip out. Okay. Vertical flip text. Is that what I said? Vertical text flip. Okay. Okay. So how do we do that? We are going to do everything in reverse order. So um, the last thing I did was with the second piece of text. So I'm just going to do that one first this time. So we're going to rotate that back to, what was it, negative 91 degrees. And then we will also bring down the opacity of it and make sure that it's not skewed anymore. So just bring that skewing down to zero. Okay, then for our second piece of text, or the serif one, the one that's visible now, we just have to do almost the same thing for that. So bring down the rotation to zero again, as well as the opacity. Or no, the opacity will actually go back up to 100. Okay, now let me do that. So two seconds, ease again, and I'll make sure to place these a point one second delay after the other one. So now let's just go try this out, see how it works. Ooh, okay. Okay, let's figure out what the problem is, because it seems as though our second text right here isn't flipping back. I'm wondering why. Our, our piece of text here, this visible one, doesn't have that combo class of serif. So what it's doing, this is actually a good moment, but what it's doing in here is the interaction is set on the navlink wrapper element right now both of these pieces have that that class of nav link but our our um our sans one has that class of sans up until about like right now our serif one didn't have that class so if you read what it says here it says class so effect by class the class nav link and only children with this class so the children elements of the trigger element, which is navlink wrapper, that have the class navlink are both of them, right? So what it was doing is it was applying this rotation, this opacity back to the second one as well. And we don't want that. So we're going to change the class of this to navlink serif. This should fix it. Um, let's actually fix our easing settings as well. Make that ease out. Okay, now let's go and check this out. Ah, uh, perfect. There we go. Um, that looks a little bit weird though. <laughs> okay, being nitpicky now, but let's see. Okay, we don't want to rotate a negative 180 degrees. When did that get changed? Let's go back to 91, was it? Is that what we put in our last one? Let's see. Okay, there. That looks way more natural. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what kind of content you want from me in the future. Um, I am thinking of diversifying beyond Webflow. So if you have any other ideas, just let me know. Okay, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.